All right, we're going to talk about climate factors and the effect that they have on the temperature and the precipitation of a place. And here is the table I'll put together. Your notes have it separated so that we can talk about uh, individual factors and um, add little sketches to your notes to help explain. So the first one is latitude. And latitude, of course, we've already talked about the effect that temperature has excuse me, latitude has on temperature because the equator we know is the warm spot on the globe because it receives the most direct sunlight. And then as you move away from the equator in either direction, it gets cooler. So coldest area on the planet um, are the poles. And then the precipitation effect of latitude we've also already talked about because we know that at the equator that warm um, sunlight causes the air to rise and we've already drawn this diagram showing how that rising air then cools and sinks back down again about 30 degrees away from the equator um, and we can add in some more arrows here so this is a diagram we've already drawn and we've already talked about how this rising air creates areas of low pressure and sinking air creates areas of high pressure so we can add some H's and L's um, and we know that low pressure is what causes uh, cloud, cloudiness and raininess because the rising air cools and um, allows clouds to form. So I can add some, some clouds here, maybe some rain at the equator. Oh, that's not a good cloud. Um, whereas on the 30 degree lines north and south of the equator, it is um, lower precipitation and generally clear. Oops, clear, clear. Okay, the next set of factors have to do with elevation or altitude. Um, and as we go higher, it gets cooler. This is something we have talked about before. So that means that if you're in a mountainous region, it's generally going to be cooler. Um, at the top of this mountain that I have drawn, it will be cooler than um, down at sea level. Um, in terms of precipitation, um, we're going to talk about the windward and leeward side of mountains. So these are words that maybe you haven't run into before. So windward means the side facing the wind. So if our wind is coming in over the ocean, um, obviously it's going to pick up moisture. So this is going to be a, um, a wind full of moisture. And as it hits the mountain, it's going to be forced up. And just like we've talked about so many times before, rising air is going to cool. And as it cools, that allows for the formation of clouds and precipitation. So on this windward side of the mountain, wind it is going to be rainier. Now this air has sort of, think about it as like a sponge. We sort of squeezed out the moisture from the air, but it's gonna continue on down um, over the mountains to the other side, back down lower again. But now it's uh, dry because we've, we've already squeezed out the moisture um, by cooling it up there at the top of the mountain. So now we got dry air on the leeward side. So the next climate factor is um, has to do with where you are on a continent. Are you on the coastal area or are you in the center of a large landmass? So let's talk about temperature first. So if you are on a coast near the water, the temperature is going to be um, a little bit more stable. Um, and that is because water heats and cools slowly. So there isn't drastic change um, day to night or even seasonally. So places near the coast um, are affected by this big body of water that's holding on to its heat. So coastal areas tend to have lower variation in temperatures um, seasonally as well as um, day to night. Whereas in the center of a landmass, um, you no water nearby, surrounded all by land, and land heats and cools quickly.
So what happens is you get more ugh, you get more extreme temperatures um, in the middle of a landmass. So day to night, it can really change what, you know, get very hot during the day and then cool off quickly at night. Or um, seasonally, you get super hot summers and super cold winters. Um, and that is, is the characteristic of temperature changes um, in the middle of the landmass. So precipitation um, also is different on the coast versus uh, in the center of a continent. So if you're near a coast, um, you're going to have more rain. And that makes sense. Uh, we know you need a source of moisture in order to get rain. But the other thing to um, take in consideration is the direction of the wind. So let me change my color here. Um, again, this, this idea of windward versus um, leeward comes into effect. So we have talked about the global winds and how they blow from west to east across the U.S. And that means that the windward side of um, the continent is the west coast. And so west coast is going to, in, um, in general, be a bit wetter because the wind that's blowing in uh, has a chance to pick up all the moisture as it's blowing over the ocean. Um, so still, we get moisture on the east coast because we're right next to the ocean, but just a little bit less in comparison um, to the west coast. Whereas um, comparing it to the middle of the continent, in general, is drier because uh, the wind by this time has uh, lost its moisture and there's very little opportunity to pick up more in the center of the continent, um, which means you get a drier climate um, in the center. All right, the last climate factor has to do with ocean currents and temperature. So if you are looking at a place that is near a warm ocean current, such as the east coast of the US, um, that warm water will cause the um, nearby land to have a warmer climate. Whereas if you're near a place with a cold ocean current, such as the west coast of the US, it's going to impact the climate, uh, causing it to cool a little bit. And you can extend this pattern globally because of the gyres um, that we talked about when we were learning about ocean currents. Over here on the west coast of Europe and Africa, you have a colder current. So that's going to uh, cause uh, the climate to be cooler here, whereas when you're looking at the east coast of um, we've got Japan and Asia there, that is a warmer current area which is causing a warmer climate.